Good day. I am Dr. Aquino, a resident from the Institute of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine. Talking about depression and suicide in youth is crucial because it can save lives. By bringing these issues into the open and providing support and resources, we can help young people overcome their struggles and prevent tragic outcomes. To understand and address depression and suicide in youth, we will be exploring the scope of the problem, common myths, risk factors, warning signs, dealing strategies, and the importance of screening for depression. Scope of the problem. Depression and suicide have become increasingly prevalent among young people in recent years, with even 10-year-olds reported to have suffered from depression and committed suicide, according to the National Poison Management and Control Center at PGH. Shockingly, youth account for 46% of all reported suicides since 2011, with 30% being young adults aged 20 to 35 years old, 16% being teens aged 10 to 19 years old, and 2 to 3% being children aged 10 to 12 years old. This rising trend of suicide is especially concerning for those aged 15 to 24 years old, who have the highest suicide rate. Therefore, it is crucial to address this serious problem and understand its scope, risk factors, warning signs, and effective strategies for dealing with it, including the importance of screening for depression. Depression is a significant global health issue, affecting people of all age, ages and backgrounds. It is the most common mental health problem worldwide, with an estimated 300 million people suffering from it. The effects of depression can be profound, leading to decreased quality of life, reduced productivity, and even increased mortality. In fact, it is estimated that the global cost of depression has reached up to 1 trillion US dollars per year in lost productivity. In 2015, suicide ranked as the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds worldwide, with a total of 788,000 suicide deaths and a global suicide rate of 10.7 per 100,000 population. In the Philippines, 3.3% of the total population, equivalent to 3.3 million Filipinos, suffer from depressive disorder, while 3.1%, equivalent to 3.1 million Filipinos, suffer from anxiety disorders. In 2012, there were 2,558 reported cases of suicide in the country, equivalent to a suicide rate of 2.9 per 100,000 population, with nearly 8 out of 10 reported suicide cases being male. Among ASEAN countries, the Philippines had the lowest suicide rate in 2012 at 2.9 per 100,000 population, while Myanmar had the highest at 13.1 per 100,000. Myths regarding suicide Many people hold misconceptions about suicide that hinder proper assessment and intervention. One such myth is that suicide happens suddenly without warning. However, most suicides are preceded by warning signs, which it is important to be knowledgeable about when assessing the suicidal risk of a person. Another myth is that someone who is suicidal is determined to die. In fact, suicidal people are often ambivalent about dying, and timing of intervention is therefore imperative to prevent the completion of a suicidal act. Talking about suicide is sometimes discouraged due to the fear of misinterpretation as encouragement, but this is a myth that needs to be debunked as it can allow an individual to discuss their feelings and provide an opportunity to rethink suicide. Lastly, it is often believed that if someone is suicidal, they will remain that way. However, it is important to note that suicidal thoughts are not permanent and suicide is preventable with proper assessment and intervention. Risk factors are characteristics that increase the likelihood of an individual considering, attempting, or dying by suicide. In the case of children and adolescents, certain indicators for potential self-harm include relationship problems, serious family conflicts and fights, abusive or unpredictable behavior of parents, isolation or alienation from family members or friends, multiple losses, and academic pressures. These factors can significantly impact the family, school, and environment of the individual and may ultimately lead them to consider suicide. It is important to identify and address these risk factors early on to prevent potential harm and promote mental health and well-being in young individuals. Risk factors that influence an individual's mood or risk-taking behavior include a range of mental health issues such as mood disorders like depression, anxiety, or psychosis, as well as conduct disorders and substance or alcohol use. These mental health issues can lead to feelings of hopelessness or unhappiness, which can ultimately impact the individual's decision-making processes and increase their likelihood of engaging in risky behaviors or considering suicide. Mood disorders like depression can cause persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and worthlessness, which can lead to a lack of interest in daily activities and a decrease in overall quality of life. Similarly, anxiety disorders can cause persistent worry and fear, leading to a sense of helplessness and hopelessness. Psychotic disorders can cause a disconnection from reality, leading to confusion, paranoia, and a sense of isolation. Conduct, conduct disorders, on the other hand, can lead to aggressive or antisocial behavior, a disregard for rules and authority, and a lack of empathy for others. 
substance or alcohol use can also lead to changes in mood and behavior, causing individuals to take more risks or engage in impulsive behaviors. Exposure to suicidal behavior or actual suicide of a family member or close friend can be a significant risk factor for an individual to consider suicide themselves. This exposure can lead to feelings of hopelessness, guilt, or a sense of inevitability that suicide is an acceptable or even desirable option. Additionally, exposure to suicide through social media or other forms of media can increase an individual's risk for suicidal behavior by normalizing and glamorizing it. Homicidal ideation, or thoughts of killing oneself or others, can also be a risk factor for suicide. These thoughts may stem from feelings of anger, desperation, or a sense of being trapped with no other way out. Feeling hopeless or unhappy is a common risk factor for suicide. When individuals feel that their life circumstances are insurmountable and that they have no control over their situation, suicide may seem like the only way out. This is particularly true for individuals with mood disorders such as depression, anxiety, or psychosis, as these conditions can impair an individual's ability to cope with difficult situations and can lead to a sense of hopelessness or despair. In summary, exposure to suicidal behavior, homicidal ideation, and feelings of hopelessness or unhappiness can all increase an individual's risk for suicide. Young people face unique risk factors that make them more susceptible to suicide, including parental divorce or separation, bullying or harassment by peers, sexual identity crisis, and access to lethal means such as guns. Other risk factors include genetic predisposition, feelings of isolation or being cut off from others, inadequate problem-solving skills, ineffective coping mechanisms, and cultural or religious beliefs that accept suicide as an acceptable solution to personal dilemmas. Additionally, exposure to suicide, whether through personal experience or family history, can significantly impact an individual's mental state and increase their risk of suicidal ideation. It is important to identify and address these youth-specific risk factors to promote mental health and well-being and prevent potential harm. There are several youth-specific risk factors that increase the likelihood of young individuals considering or attempting suicide. These risk factors include the influence of significant people who died by suicide, loss or separation such as death, divorce, or relationships, exposure to violence, and family crisis like abuse, domestic violence, running away, or child parental conflict. Other risk factors include barriers to receiving mental health treatment such as stigma, affordability, availability, and accessibility, experiences of disappointment or rejection, and feelings of stress brought about by perceived achievement needs. Unwanted pregnancy, abortion, infection with HIV or other STDs, severe or physical terminal illness, or mental illness or substance abuse can also contribute to an individual's risk of suicide. It is essential to identify and address these risk factors early on to prevent potential harm and promote the mental health and well-being of young individuals. Stress plays a major role in triggering mental disorders. It is defined as the physical, mental, or emotional strain or pressure. In normal amounts, stress can be desirable and healthy, as it can improve performance, motivation, and adaptation. However, excessive stress can cause recurrent symptoms such as headaches, excess anxiety, insomnia, depression, nightmares, reduced appetite, muscle pains, and reduced efficiency. The sources of stress can come from various areas of life such as school, work, social media, home, and relationships. It is important to recognize and manage stress effectively to prevent the development of mental health issues. Chronic stress can have a significant impact on the adolescent brain, which is particularly vulnerable to its effects. The brain is a major target of stress, with the hippocampus responsible for memory storage, the prefrontal cortex for executive functions, and the amygdala for emotions. Exposure to chronic stress can lead to reduced volume of the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex, and an increased volume of the amygdala, which compromises emotional functions and cognitive skills. This increase in stress-related dysfunction can result in anxiety, depression, non-suicidal self-injury, and drug abuse, among other things. It is important to recognize and address chronic stress in adolescents to promote healthy brain development and prevent long-term negative outcomes. Warning Signs Mental health disorders can be a significant warning sign that an individual is at risk for suicide. The presence of mood disorders such as bipolar disorder or major depressive disorder, anxiety disorders, depression, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, non-suicidal self-injury, NSSI, and substance use disorders are all factors that can increase the risk of suicide. Mood disorders can lead to intense feelings of sadness or hopelessness that can make an individual feel like there is no way out, leading to thoughts of suicide. Anxiety disorders, such as generalized anxiety disorder or panic disorder, can cause excessive worry and fear that can be overwhelming, leading to suicidal thoughts or actions. Depression, which is characterized by persistent feelings of sadness, can lead to a sense of hopelessness and worthlessness, 
making an individual feel like there is no point in living. ADHD can lead to difficulties with impulse control and can increase the likelihood of engaging in risky behaviors, including self-harm and suicidal behaviors. NSSI, which is deliberate self-harm without suicidal intent, can still be a warning sign for suicidal behavior, as it may indicate an individual is experiencing intense emotional pain and may be considering suicide as a means of escape. Substance use disorders, including alcohol and drug abuse, can also increase the risk of suicide, as they can exacerbate symptoms of mental health disorders and lead to impulsive and risky behaviors. These are the red flags for suicide, which are the earliest identifiable signals that a young person may imminently harm themselves. Some examples of these red flags include actually talking about suicide or plans for suicide, seeking out ways to harm or kill oneself, expressing statements such as, I'm going to kill myself, I wish I were dead, or I shouldn't have been born, being preoccupied with death in conversations, writings, or drawings, and giving verbal hints with statements like, I won't be a problem for you much longer, nothing matters, it's no use, and I won't see you again. It is important to take these red flags seriously and seek help as soon as possible if they are observed in a young person, as they may be at risk for suicide. Early intervention and treatment can save lives and prevent suicide attempts. Dealing with suicide in the youth. Prevention and early treatment are crucial in addressing mental health issues, particularly depression. Research shows that early treatment can prevent or reverse changes in the brain that are associated with recurrent episodes. Failing to seek treatment is a missed opportunity, as problems can persist well into adulthood. Shockingly, more than 50% of psychiatric disorders in pediatric settings go unrecognized and untreated, according to studies. A U.S. survey of parents also found that only 34% reported pediatricians routinely evaluating emotional and behavioral issues, while 56% reported that pediatricians do not do so. It is important to prioritize early detection and intervention to improve the mental health outcomes of young individuals. When someone expresses suicidal thoughts, it is important to not leave them alone and take immediate action. Knowing referral resources can help facilitate the process of getting them the help they need. Reassuring the person and encouraging them to participate in the helping process can also be beneficial. It is important to encourage the suicidal person to identify other people in their lives who can also provide support. Creating a safety plan is crucial, including making arrangements for the helper to come to the person or taking them directly to the source of help. Once therapy or hospitalization is initiated, it is essential to ensure that the suicidal person is following through with appointments and medications to receive the appropriate treatment. The Patient Health Questionnaire 9, PHQ-9, is a versatile tool that can be used for various purposes related to depression, such as screening, diagnosis, monitoring, and assessing its severity. The PHQ-9 score is calculated by adding up the scores for each of the nine questions. Depression severity can be assessed based on the score range, where a score of 0 to 4 indicates no depression, 5 to 9 indicates mild depression, 10 to 14 indicates moderate depression, 15 to 19 indicates moderately severe depression, and 20 to 27 indicates severe depression. It's important to note that question 9 is specifically designed to screen for suicide risk, and if a patient answers, yes, to this question, further assessment for suicide risk is necessary. This assessment should be conducted by an individual who is qualified and competent to evaluate such risks. Finally, we end this discussion to remind you that while living in this world, you are not alone in this fight. Your struggles with mental health do not define you, they are simply a part of your story. Keep going, keep fighting, and know that there is hope and help available to you. Thank you for listening.